guys. What you looking for? Did you find some worms? Geese? You see the goose there? They are not looking for worms. They are just eating grass. Come on out. This is the open air cage for the broody mama who has new babies. Hi, mama. A lot of the other birds will come in and clean up extra feed. What you doing, Mama? Where's your babies? There they are. All right. So I put, for ducks, I put food next to the pond. And the reason for that is that ducks can't wash their food down. Ducks can't wash their food down without water. So, get these guys their food. There you go, guys. Hey, guys, we are in the single digits today. We have been in the mornings for the last week, maybe two weeks. Doesn't mean any of the projects on the homestead stop. They just kind of slow down and we tweak them so that we're not getting frostbite. This morning we have the wood stove going nice and hot. In order for you to be able to hear me, I had to turn off the fans. We keep a fan here and then a fan there to blow the heat down the hallway. This is how we heat our home is with the wood stove. At night we keep baseboards turned to about 65 in bedrooms and we do not keep the fire going at night. Otherwise it gets too hot. <laughs> so when you're doing winter um, slightly off grid type things, Again, you do have to tweak things. So this morning we have two geese that need to be plucked and I wanted to show you how to do it in the house. Uh, it is best to butcher your poultry in the fall and early winter. The reason for that is that they will have acquired all the fat inside their body cavity, which is really good to use for cooking. And you can turn any animal fat into lard. My favorite is sheep fat turned into lard, but uh, goose and duck fat is delectable. You render it when you cook the goose, you pour it off, you put it in a jar, you let it cool, you put it in the fridge and you can use it as, as a substitute for butter in, in cooking, in frying, that kind of thing. Sautéing. So, if you like really beautiful, finished, perfect homesteading videos, make sure to go check out Little Mountain Ranch. Chelsea is doing an amazing job over there. Oh my gosh, every time she puts up a cooking video, I watch it because she's just calm and it's beautiful and it's serene. Nothing like what's happening in my kitchen right now. So make sure to go check her out. She has curated it beautifully and she gives me feelings of inspiration and um, desires to be better at what I do. I don't feel, a lot of times on Instagram, you feel kind of like you don't like the person because everything they're doing is so perfect and Chelsea doesn't make you feel that way. So make sure to go check out Little Mount Ranch and see what she's doing over there. She's very inspirational. All right, so these are pillowcases. If you were doing a duck, you'd want a smaller pillowcase. They work better if they're cotton because then you don't have the static problem, but all I have is some large polyester pillowcases. And what you do is you go out and you put your goose in, head down, feet up, and then when you put the pillowcase on your arm, you have this rubber band on so that the fluffy down doesn't get into your house. And every time you need to go empty your pillowcase, you just walk out to a space where it's okay to have mulch and mess and you dump your dry pillowcase. I do not dip my geese or my ducks. It does not make it easier, it makes it harder. When you dip waterfowl, it makes it much harder to pluck them because then their feathers turn kind of slimy and they have three different layers of feathers. And so it's easier just to dry pluck them. So we're gonna show you how to do that. All right, so this is our smokehouse. We built it out of old lumber when our deck was too big for beyond reason. When we moved here, it was falling apart, it was in shambles. So we used the lumber to build 
walls around the gazebo that was here that had a useless hot tub in it that was totally broken. There are spaces in between the lumber that allow air to flow through, so it stays very cold in there. When we're at single digits at night, it's cold enough that everything pr freezes pretty solid, pretty fast. During plucking or any of these other really big jobs where you're just kind of sitting and doing mindless work, I will turn on an audiobook for the girls, not a movie, but an audiobook. Right now, Kai is really liking Terry Pratchett, uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. All great audiobooks. So I'll turn this on. We'll sit and pluck. Last time we got uh, four ducks done in about six hours maybe. Yeah. We take little breaks, we eat. The nice thing is, is because the ducks are frozen, I don't have to be in a hurry to get to them. If it had taken me another day to get to them, it just wasn't a big deal. All microbial action stops when they're frozen. So it's not like, and there's no bugs outside. There's no uh, flies, there's nothing out there to contaminate the meat. It works perfectly. It really takes a lot of the stress down. It's the same way for the big animals, like the pigs and the sheep. We gut them, we skin them, and then we put them in the smokehouse. And because of how cold it is, and because there's air that flows through the smokehouse, it, it's even colder in the smokehouse than it is outside. It means that it can take me a week to get a pig broken down, but it doesn't matter because it's frozen in the smokehouse. Make sure to get the little white one so you can actually get it. Yeah. The other one's going to be too heavy for you. It really was cold last night, but it's frozen solid. Yep, frozen solid. Look. Make sure that the door gets closed. You've got a cat approaching. Yeah. Make sure that the string gets pulled. The cats do know when it's butchering time, so they will show interest. All right, so the sooner, I usually like to put the, the bird in the pillowcase before I bring it in, but we will just work with what we got. Here, take one corner. He's frozen solid. Yep, he will be. All right, now she's going to go take off her jacket so that she's just in a long uh, t-shirt with short sleeves. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this rubber band around the opening. And then she will put her arm through. And that way, none of the poofy feathers come out if she forgets what she's doing because sometimes that does happen and then she just plucks from inside the that, um pillowcase that's why i have a short sleeve shirt on because otherwise it gets all over your sleeves and if you need to take out your arm you can't it's very fluffy very fluffy so we have saved the down before to make pillows and stuff but unless you have a whole bunch of birds, it takes a really long time to make a pillow. And if you are going to be using the down for pillows, you do not want to have have dipped them. You don't want the feathers to be wet. It, it just makes life really difficult to pluck any kind of waterfowl. And I know people say, well, put a drop of soap in the water. That fixes it. It doesn't fix it. It just makes the feathers slimy and hard to grasp. So this is what Kaya will do up until she feels like there's too many feathers in there, at which point she will walk outside with her arms still in the pillowcase, and she will open the pillowcase and let all the feathers fall out, and then she'll put her arm back in while she's outside, come back in, and that way we don't have any feathers, no feathers in the whole house. Last time we weren't careful enough, and there's feathers still in that fan from it. Yeah. There's some little feathers in the fan because we had not a lot, but a few little feathers that dusted about. But as long as you keep the pillowcase outside when you're emptying it and you put your arm back in before you come back in, you might have a handful of feathers, but it's nothing compared to what it's like to mm -hmm. actually do it without the pillowcase. Yeah. Again, what works best is a cotton pillowcase. 
but the geese are bigger than the ducks, so my cotton pillowcases wouldn't be big enough. So we're using polyester. I don't like the polyester because it creates static and it holds on to the feathers. All right, Kaya has the small younger one. Paige has the big older one. And these guys are a little harder to pluck than ducks. They're bigger, their feathers are well anchored. But you can see once again, rubber band, no feathers in the kitchen, warm toes, warm nose, mm -hmm. warm clothes, <laughs> warm everything instead of being out in nine degrees warm trying tea. to pluck things. It's very difficult to pluck things with gloves on. You can't pluck things with gloves oh. on, which means you'd be out with just your fingers at nine degrees, you would get frostbite. All right, comfort is very important when you're doing something like this. It's gonna take them a few hours. So, I have our home dried pears for them to snack on. They each have a mug of tea. We have the audio book. Kitchen's clean. Lunch is contemplated, but not started yet. Dinner is in the fridge. Wood stove is going nice and warm. Just put more wood in. So, hopefully they're comfy. They're going to be at it. Every time they feel like their uh, bag is too full of feathers, they walk out. They let the feathers fall out the bottom of the pillowcase, close the top, bring it back in, start again. We, go, we dump the feathers over there on the deck. They just blow off under the deck, and that's already deep mulched to have squash planted into it, and feathers are high in nitrogen, so they make a great mulch. If it was summertime, we would clean them up and have them in the compost, but in the winter, it just doesn't matter. All right, the girls are ready to go out. They're going to hold the goose so that it's not hanging off the pillowcase. And they're going to take it out and empty out the feathers. Graham, stay here. No, no. She doesn't realize she needs to get away from the door. Oh, maybe it's not. Mm -hmm. 